And today we'll do a little test. What we'll do is we'll etch stainless steel, we'll anneal stainless steel, and we'll also uh, mark anodized aluminum. And then what we'll do, we'll stick them all in the sandblaster behind me, and we'll see how durable it is. So I think this will be a really interesting video, and uh, I look forward to doing it. My company does a lot of custom welding tags. Sometimes they're put in back in machines, sometimes they're put outside. They, they're found in a whole bunch of different environments, including like valve tags and that kind of stuff in mines. A situation that often comes up is the customer says, well, how durable are your tags? What makes us unique is that we make the custom tags to your spec, for one thing. But we also have a fiber laser, which means that we're not adding anything to the metal. There's no ceramic bonding happening in this shop. We're either annealing stainless steel, etching stainless steel, or we're using anodized aluminum. Now there is a difference between etching and annealing. The top part here you'll see, I gotta move it around just to show you how it acts with light. So the top part here is actually etching. Now it's not a pitch black, as you see with the annealing. And this here is an extreme kind of etching, it's much, much deeper than this one here. For custom tags that go in back of a machine, uh, annealing is totally fine, very visible, and it'll last pretty much forever, is my opinion. Uh, etching, what that is, is instead of just uh, darkening the upper surface of the tag, we're actually engraving into the tag using, again, the same fiber laser. The top one here and this one here are done at the same speed settings, so it just gives you a comparison. Uh, I guess cost-wise. This one's nice and smooth, this one's pretty rough, and this one's very rough. So what we'll do now first, we'll take a look at our industrial laser etching these tags. One of the biggest difference between etching stainless steel and annealing stainless steel is the sparks that are produced uh, during the production process. If you notice, there are a lot of sparks during the etching, and what I want you to do is look at the same tag now being annealed, and you'll notice there's almost no sparks or anything of that kind being produced. Again, annealing is a different process than etching. Annealing is just on the very top surface. We're superheating the metal and at you know, very specific DPIs, uh, around 600 DPI. And what we're doing is we're superheating the top so that it's remelting in oxidization, while etching is actually going into. So it's a different process, but the same idea, using the same equipment. So let's take a look at that now.
question you might have is if annealing and etching are basically taking the same amount of time and cost the same to do on stainless steel tag, why would you want one over the other? Let's take a look at it a little bit closer here. If you notice, the annealing is nice and black and visible, while the etching is not as visible. So it's purely an aesthetic. Also, if you're doing a lot of cleaning, this here is very rough and it, you'll get like particles stuck in it and that kind of stuff. So for like the food industry, we always do annealing because it's really, really smooth. While for more industrial processes, let's say a tag that goes outside or on an equipment that's really exposed to the elements a lot, well then we'll do the etching. Because the annealing is still fine, as you'll see, but the etching is just an extra bit of uh, extra marking, I guess. So now what we'll do, we'll see this part here produced. Now to the fun part. This here is an industrial sandblaster that we use with a lot of our customers. And the reason why I put this tag in there is to find out how durable what we do actually is. Now a couple of caveats. The amount of pressure and grit coming out of this thing is I don't think you'll find anything like that in nature. Um, we're going 80 psi, so pounds per square inch. And I'm just using a regular beach sand. So think about uh, extremely high pressure sand blowing on your skin. This thing here would blow off the skin off my finger in about a second. So just to give you an idea, so one second my finger is bleeding and I'm down to the bone um, and that's what we'll put these tags under. And what we'll do is we'll do it with a stainless steel, we'll do it on the annealing, the etching and the deep etching and we'll also do it with anodized aluminum. So you have some sort of, sort of grade to figure out uh, just to see what it's like. What I did special with the sandblaster is actually I showed the videos of us sandblasting the tags real time. So if you see it takes 5 seconds, 10 seconds, it actually takes 5 seconds, 10 seconds. As you can see here, here are the results. So the original tag up the top here and the other one here that's sandblasted. We'll focus on this one here. So if you notice the annealing is pretty much off but it's still visible. And the etching up here uh, you see a bit of a shadow, so again it is visible and the very deep one here as you can see is visible clearly. Give you an idea, I think this was around 5 seconds each, 5 to 10 seconds, um, I'll have to look back on the video. This one here was done double the time just to see and it's still clearly visible. What we'll do now, we'll do the same thing with anodized aluminum.
You might be surprised by how little long the anodization on this tank lasted, but you have to compare it to everything else. This is 80 PSI beach sand shooting down an inch and a half away from this tank. I knew it wouldn't last compared to Suna Steel. It's just a different medium. It doesn't mean anodization is horrible. It's actually amazing. Um, this is just an extreme example of, uh, I guess, environmental conditions that seriously do not exist on Earth. Um, I can't think of any sort of weather environment that would be a consistent blowing of sand at that distance and that much pressure going down onto it. I had done a couple of tests with our stainless steel tags. These tags here are a lot thicker. They're about triple the thickness as well. And the reason why I chose thicker is because when you're annealing or etching stainless steel, if you have a lot of density in the marking, it actually ends up heating up the tag and bending it in our laser. And sandblasting does the same thing as well. So sandblasting actually causes the tags to sort of bend a little bit just because it's, we use a thinner gauge to keep it, them affordable for you guys. So if you want some custom tags done, any size, any shape, any material, uh, contact me at cncroi.com. As you can see, there is definitely uh, more durability in stainless steel, but there also, also is a lot more cost as you go up the scale. And to be honest with you, again, this is in the back of a machine or something like that. You'll never have these kind of conditions anywhere near what I've just exposed all these tags to.